It's been going so good, getting so much good feedback of us helping the masses to make better decisions and take care of their clients and communicate confidently so that we can deliver the message of what's happening tomorrow, tomorrow, it's happening tomorrow. Well, in many markets, it's been implemented before today, so you're probably already experiencing it. Well, we talking about the NER settlement deadline, so your MLS may have already changed compensation and what's in there, along with the history of all of that compensation. So I want to help you today. Uh, if you didn't tune in with us last week, we talked about the five crucial conversations you need to have and with who. So go back and watch that. If you're if you're on Facebook, it's there. If you're watching this on the playback on YouTube or Instagram, it's also there. Okay? So go back and watch that. We have a communication kit, client communication settlement. Oh, I forget what it's called. I'm looking right at it on my other screen, actually. Navigating the August 17th settlement guide. Settlement communication kit. That's what we call it. Okay. But today, because uh, and thinking about it further, I'm like, you guys need to role play. Here's your scripts. Here's your scripts. Here's your scripts. Here's your scripts. But then I thought to myself, have you ever role played? Because I've been role playing for a very long time. And then it's, it's, I'm just assuming that you know how to. So we're going to kind of give you the anatomy, meaning like what makes up a good role play, how many people you need, how you should structure it so that when you're doing it on your own, you do a great job because practice doesn't make perfect. Perfect practice makes perfect. So doing it right when you're practicing uh, is the only way to get better. There are four levels of competency. If you've never heard this before, uh, we all start out as unconsciously incompetent, which means we don't know what we don't know. Then we go to consciously incompetent. We're like, well, I know now that I know nothing. <laughs> and then we come consciously competent. We're like, okay, now I know I know some things. And then unconsciously competent is when you get to the point where somebody gives you an objection and you're like, pow, 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 pow. And you can just, and they go, what did you just say? I'm like, I don't know. It just came out unconsciously competent. So our goal is to get you there. You don't have to be good to start, but you have to start in order to be good. Yeah, I have a lot of energy today and every day. So where do you want to begin? Let's start with the anatomy of a role play. Okay. Let's see, where am I going to do this? Do, do, do. Here we go. Pew! All right. Uh, so seven, seven steps, seven. How do I want to put this? Seven things, <laughs> seven parts to a good role play. Okay. It starts with first, number one. Okay. If you're taking notes, but we have this on the screen over on the book face. Number one is prepare, right? You shouldn't, if you're going to be somebody who's facilitating the role play, you should have a plan ahead of time. Depending, you know, 30 minutes might be a good amount of time to start. I think an hour is even better if you have a larger group, right? But 30 minutes to start. Now, 30 minutes sounds like a lot of time, but it goes by quickly if you're going to be doing role play. So don't waste time. I'm like, how's everybody doing? Oh, any open houses this week? Any new listings? Like all of that stuff could be another Zoom. That's not the purpose of your call. If your purpose of your call is to do a role play, well, damn it, get on the role play and let's start going. Okay? So pre-call pre preparation. Pre-call preparation. You know, I have clear objectives. Like today we're going to be working on buyer objections. On Monday, I might be working on seller objections to the compensation question, right? So what's the purpose of the call? Within that object objectives, then say, okay, let's come up with three scenarios. Or when you get started, maybe it's let's do one scenario and we'll do it multiple times. I think that's good if you have a smaller group because then each person can get a turn. You have different perspectives on that script uh, and it'll help you to internalize it better, okay? So using, once you have the scenarios, planned out, then you create the script. Lucky for you, today I'm going to give you 70-something scripts, uh, well, 70-something objections and then ways to overcome it just specifically related to uh, buyer and seller objections and the compensation question. Okay, so let me start out by giving you, you're going to go J, J Man Abat. Okay, J Man Abat will get you to my 
AI chatbot, right? I'm going to put this in a comment on Facebook. If you're on Instagram, it's J M A N A B O T dot com. We'll get you to my, my AI chatbot. Now, when you go there, if you ask it for buyer objection scripts, buyer agent objection scripts, let me just make sure. It will automatically, it, it'll give you a Google Doc to all of it, but I'm just going to verify that before we move forward. Okay, so planning. You're in the planning phase. You have all your scripts. You're like, okay, let's do this one, this one, and this one for today. The next step for you is the setting. And what I mean by the setting is if you're going to be doing that on, on Zoom, and this is the benefit, right, because you may not to get, be able to get agents to work with you in your office, uh, it could be another office, it could be another company for that matter. And so what I would encourage you to do is you hop on, or you should already know that when you hop on, you want to have your cameras on. Okay. If you know that you're going to role play, do your hair, do whatever, or just come on as you are. Nobody cares. Okay. So have your camera on, have decent, a decent microphone. I'm not saying you have to get a pro mic setup, but if it, yours is really bad, it'll take away from the message. Like I won't be able to focus on what you're saying because it's scratchy or there's a lot of background noise. Okay, and then that goes to the setting where find a quiet place, even if it's in your car. Okay, you could do this while driving, but it's better to be stationary and focused on what you're doing. Because if we truly wanna practice this, what we need to, uh, you know, 65% of what you do is nonverbal. So if I don't see you, I won't be able to see like, you're annoyed or you're happy or you're engaged or you're leaning in or you're leaning back or you're crossing your arms. Like all of these things mean something to me if we're having a conversation about compensation. So that's why your camera needs to be on mic ready. Okay. Third part is you execute. So do the damn thing. And you know, you may have some chatty Cathy's or chatty Ken's in your role play group. There's nothing wrong with that. Uh, but maybe I think the best number to start with minimum is three. I guess you could do two. You, you could do two. I, I would prefer you have three people just because two people are role playing and the third one is the observer, but also the timekeeper. So if you want to put a time limit on three to five minutes per side, I think five minutes would be good. Uh, 10 minutes would be too long. Okay. You don't want somebody, you know, don't be the pretend buyer that's throwing out all these impossible objections because guess what? You're going next. Okay. And the observer is able to actively listen to the other two to give feedback. That's number four, right? So when you're looking at the feedback, uh, it's constructive feedback. Some of you may not have been taught how to do that. You know, I say, Oh, you know, that was really good, but here's how we can make it better. Not like, Oh damn, that's, that was awful. Well, you should never speak again because we're here to build confidence. Uh, and, and it's like, okay, here's, here's good. Are you open to some feedback? Yes. Okay. Here's what I would do just to make it a little bit better. And, and sometimes you have somebody, uh, many times I'm in a role play with somebody that's really good and the devil's in the details, right? The, this little word here or, or your vocal variety or how you said something, your, your pitch going down at the end rather than going up, the littlest details can make a difference. So you, on the flip side of that, you don't want to have somebody like, that was great. I wouldn't change a thing. That was amazing. I can't believe it. I'm going to make a shrine of you in my house about you're the best objection handler ever. Everybody can improve, even myself, any of the coaches out there uh, as we do role play. So give feedback. Okay. You don't want to be the yes person that's totally uh, telling them everything's so wonderful, but you don't also want to be the Debbie or Danny Downer saying that was awful. Okay. So give constructive feedback. Number five is role reversal. So make sure that you switch sides and this keeps it friendly. Now you don't want to be a pushover either, right? There's a, there's a happy medium of somebody who's engaging in the role play and, and gives, you know, some pushback, but don't be the most difficult person ever. Once you get more experience and, and hold on, Charlie wants to come up and say hi. Once you, <laughs> Charlie, you're so cute. Okay, Charlie, now is your time. You're, you're a star. Okay. Let's bring Charlie to work day. Uh, 
Yeah, so Charlie, get down. Once you get better, then it's okay to kind of make the role play a little bit harder. Okay, now recording and review. This may be something that you didn't think about when it comes to Zoom. Uh, one of the great benefits is that you can record it. It also transcribes it. If you have the AI component to it, the AI creates a summary. And so when you have a recording and a transcript, wow, we're talking next level opportunity here for you to get better. As, as much as it may hurt you, and I mean that in like a spiritual way, as much as it may hurt you to watch your role play back, that's the only way to get better. Like me as a speaker, I always record my sessions. It's not because I have this big ego. It's because I want to get better. I want to look at what I did, what I said, my body language, all the things to see how can I get better? How can I improve? Because I feel like we're never perfect. It's progress, not perfection, right? So where can we get better as far as um, what we said? And then the transcription helps because you may say something like go off script and be like, dang, that was pretty good. And you don't know what you said. Well, the transcription will have it all. All right. And then at the end or at the end of your, your role play, you're going to wrap up and have some kind of action plan say, okay, this week, uh, we talked about buyer objections. Let's see, let's practice that again. Or, you know, I have a buyer meeting later on today. So next, next week we're going to role play that and I'll come up with new objections of what I might have heard that we didn't cover, right? So it's kind of always refining and fine tuning. All right. Hey, Charlie. Everybody still with me? All right. So uh, you have access to J Manabot. If you're on Facebook, you see that right there, it's jmanabot.com. You're going to use super buyer agent objection. That's going to get you my Google Doc that is, I think it's 30 pages. Let me just see what it is. Yeah, it's like 30 something pages. Oh no, 27. It's only 27. Okay. You get the whole thing for free if you act now. <laughs> free 99. All right. So that's the first part. Let me get rid of this. Pew, pew, pew. Do we have any questions so far about the anatomy of a role play? Please put it in the comments or the chat. Pew. He's gone. Okay. Next, moving on to the actual objection. So let me show you what I'm working with here. Charlie's getting excited. He's gonna have to go out soon in a little bit. I'm gonna share my screen. Let's see, is this gonna work today? Oh, I'm in the corner. Okay, so I'll make this a little bit bigger. Shoop. Okay. So this is called J-Man Super Buyer Rap Projections about buyer agency. I created all these using AI, but it started with my mind, like what are all the objections I could think of? I actually fed in uh, my local form, right? So if you have a local form, you could feed it into, into GPT and say, what are some questions that a potential buyer might have about this form? Okay, that'll give you a place to start, but then also, you know, you're gonna hear things again and again from other people, uh, from your monkey brain. <laughs> Right, your brain's gonna tell you, they don't wanna sign it. They want me to work for free. They don't, all the, all the things. But it all starts with a great presentation. Like you're not just gonna go straight to your form without saying a thing. You're gonna, you should create an actual buyer's agent presentation. Hopefully your company has at this point, or at least talk about why they should work with you instead of anybody else, okay? But this has commu uh, commission transparency with a seller, uh, it, you know, concerns about commission rates, commission rebates, dual agency. If I keep going, um, I actually put in here what not to say, it, the better way to say it. The commission rate is non-negotiable and that is how the industry works. And and actually I'm gonna go through here and, and change this up. Initially when I wrote this, we would say commission. But what I would wanna say is our compensation because that's more in line with the settlement and how it's what are you doing, bro? Um, Charlie's rolling around on the floor. The settlement, how it's structured. So our compensation is structured to provide you with comprehensive services that will maximize the value and exposure of the property. Let's discuss how these services benefit you, right? Many of your ERSs, or exclusive right to sells, now have what your compensation is as a listing agent and then separately what your compensation is as a dual agent if you practice that in your state 
dual agent with designated agents if you have that in your state, and then an unrepresented buyer. It's important that you review all of this with the seller because you don't want any surprises, right? Providing good service and exceeding expectations is about going over every scenario, worst case, what it means to the seller, and then allow them to make their own educated and informed decision. <laughs> uh, I wish I could show you all that. Charlie just rolling around. Okay, let's look. I have scenario five, advising on property condition. These are what not to say. I'm going to move it all the way down now. Um, I heard about commission lawsuit. What do I have to pay a buyer's commission? When clients resist necessary paperwork, seller has the necessity of paying. So as I'm talking, I would love for you all to write in the comments or the chat, what is something that you're hearing? Okay, and please don't give me a certain percentage because all commissions are negotiable. There's no standard rate. So just say compensation. I don't want anything else with numbers in it. So if you're hearing, if you're hearing an objection or area of concern, please put it in the comments because we're going to do this live with you. Because the last part of this is how I show you how to use AI to overcome the objections that you might hear that I did not cover. Okay, so not only am I giving you a fish to eat today, many fishes. I'm giving you many fishes, but I'm also giving you a fishing pole so you could catch some AI fish for the rest of your life. All right. Oh, my brain. Key points to remember, and then I have objections continued, right? Concerns about paying a buyer's agent commission, uh, perceptions of dual agency, hesitancy to make home improvements, staging the home, marketing strategies, open houses, scheduling showings, real estate agents, need for a buyer's agent. I can't go through all these because look at this. There's, <laughs> I have 60 of them there. And then from recent role plays, I have what I've heard from agents recently. So uh, I'm just going to go to the listing agent and open houses. You're going to hear that. Okay. Uh, initial buyer contact over the phone. I don't want to sign anything. I'm hesitant. I don't want to sign a contract. How do you handle that? I don't want to work with one agent. How do you handle that? Buyer reluctance to pay. Buyer seeking to bypass the buyer's agent. Um, communicating with non-English speaking clients. This happens in many of our larger cities <clears throat> where it's very diverse. And you may be working with a client that uh, Spanish is their first language. And many of our forms are not translated, but you could have them translated and should hire a translator for that transaction to deliver the highest level of service so that you can communicate effectively with that client. Okay, addressing concerns from investors or buyers who want to work with more than one agent. That's real. You got three options for that. A seller's perspective and buyer's broker compensation. Flat fee versus percentage-based compensation, because it can be either. Handling situations where a buyer refuses to sign agreements. And then the last one, which is the sweetest one, I think. So I think that's my favorite. I don't know. Explaining compensation to a buyer script for buyer's agents. So it's three scenarios. Uh, here's what it could look like. Not, you know, scenario one, um, I have my compensation built. You know, we have our agreement for my compensation and the seller is offering that full amount. So you don't have to come out of pocket. Scenario two, it doesn't match. Well, you have to pay the difference or I can try to negotiate with your permission uh, to have that covered by the seller. So you don't have to come out of pocket. However, if they say no, uh, we have to move on or you're responsible. And if you can't afford it, then we have to move on, right? So it's, it's important in that moment you, you discuss that because it's not that you're gonna work for free, it's that just like if you had a buyer that needed concessions to purchase the home, right? If you remember back in the day when we used to be able to write offers that had buyer concessions, right? I had FHA buyer with 6% concessions. They don't have a lot of closing cost money. Guess what? I write an offer, that's a non-negotiable, the concessions, because they needed to close. Same scenario, if you think of it that way. And then if a... Seller's not offering any compensation. How do you handle that? Okay, and then there's benefits. Ultimately, explaining that agents, sometimes they always think the worst case. Oh, they're not going to pay it. What if they don't? The net's the net, right? What a seller really cares about is what they're going to net on the sale of their home. Uh, and when it comes to the market, depending on market conditions, flexibility, uh, you know, any kind of competition. Personally, if I have... Uh, a buyer client that's in a multiple offer situation and they're a cash buyer, it's to their benefit to pay me directly because now their offer 
is net positive whatever my compensation is, right? You got two offers, same 500K, my, my net's the seller, my compensation more, whatever that number might be. You're not gonna get me to say a percentage, okay? So if you're listening on Instagram or Facebook, please drop any objection you might have uh, in the comments or the chat so they know that you're still alive because you're all actively listening and I appreciate that. And I'm gonna show you. Okay, so let me just, I'm gonna think of a good objection. Help, uh, help me to overcome the objection that the buyer doesn't want to sign anything. Buyer doesn't want to sign a thing. I never had to sign anything before. I'm not going to sign anything. We got a good response here. Totally get it. Signing paperwork can feel like a big com commitment. The exclusive buyer agreement or EBA is just a really way to make sure we're both on the same page. If you're not ready to sign now, that's perfectly okay. We, can, we cannot continue looking at homes. Um, so I'm going to revise this, right? We cannot continue looking at homes, but if you do decide you want my full support and representation, we can revisit the agreement then. My main goal is to make the process smooth and beneficial for you. So if somebody doesn't want to sign something, you have to say, what is it that you don't want? Help me to understand why you don't want to sign this. Oh, well, I don't want to be locked in anymore. Okay, totally understand. I know exactly how you feel. You know, my, my, my previous buyer felt the same way, but what they found out was initially we could be non-exclusive. So we could do a non-exclusive agreement just for this weekend or for the next seven days. See if you still feel comfortable with me. And then if you feel like moving forward from there, uh, we would go to an exclusive agreement. Or we could part ways and I could free you up to work with another agent that wants to be non-exclusive. How's that sound? Okay, great. Okay, so again, this is jmanabot.com. That's my AI chatbot. And then last thing I want to show you that can really help to raise the level of service that you're providing for your clients is an AI chatbot for real estate agents. Now, I'm gonna just show you this one. This is the Monero team. But if I go to, and again, if you're on Instagram, I'm sharing this on Facebook. It's facebook.com slash jmatspeaks if you wanna see the visuals. But in here, I have a VIP client set up. I have questions about buyer agent compensation, how that works if an agent goes there. Um, what is my home worth? But then I have buyer resources, right? If I go like this and I click on buyer resources, I have a really great buyer's guide, okay? And then I have a learning library, okay? A learning library. And if I go there, because studies have shown that when people contact us or they have some kind of inquiry about real estate, typically they're in that information gathering stage. So that is the six to 24 months before they ever decide, right? We call that the zero moment of truth. The moment of truth is when they actually decide to buy a home. So when they're at that information gathering stage, they're going to go to agents that have information and resources and education and things that can really help them. So if they go to mine and we go to um, Dream Home Guide, Monero Team Dream Home Guide, let's go there first. And then second, we're going to go to the learning library. Sorry, I had a call. All right, so here's the learning library. So I did this in notion.so, note taking app, but what it is, what makes it even better is that you can make like these single page websites and publish them. Initially, I was just giving them access to a Google Drive and it just wasn't good enough, okay? Good enough wasn't good enough anymore. We got to go next level. So you see the buyer resources. I go here and they have like seven reasons to work with a realtor, seven reasons to own a home, questions when choosing a realtor, uh, vocabulary, agency and agency relationship, preparing for house hunting. And if I click on that, they have all the inf all this information. So this is truly a learning library. Initially, I had PDFs that they could download. I don't want that. I want them to stay here and come back here and keep learning because I'm the only one that's providing this, right? 
I'm gonna go back here and then I'll show you what the guide looks like because the guide is pretty nice. I did it with hazine.com, which is integrated with Canva. If you have a Canva account, you have access to hazine. And then one of the great features of hazine is that you can include music in the background. Okay, so listen to this. <coughs> Actually, I, I don't know if my sound effects are going to be working. Ah, all right. Well, I have a Monero team theme song that I created on suno.com, S-U-N-O.com. Pretty good. Next level stuff that they won't get anywhere else. All right, so if you're looking to get your own AI chatbot, you can go to bigbrainchatbots.com slash real estate. Uh, we have a discount code for you. If you stayed this long, you deserve it. So the first one is JMAN400. That'll get you $400 off the setup. And then JMAN200 will get you $200 off the monthly. It's only good for the first 30 agents that take advantage of it. Uh, and it doesn't matter where you are in the world. We can help you. Okay. Any questions? All right. This was a nice, quick, and easy one. This is Jeremiah's J-Man Monero. J-Man Speaks. Uh, make it a great day.